the, the next set of speakers are going to hopefully leave us hopeful about the future of democracy. So uh, inviting Glenn Harris and Jane Haslam. Glenn is the president of Race Forward. with about 25 years of work on racial equity in localities. And James Haslam is the executive director of Rights and Democracy in Vermont and New Hampshire, and on probably every national network board you could think of, and one of our <laughs> national <laughs> leaders. So I'm going to uh, launch with a question to you, Glenn. You, you often say you can't have democracy without racial justice, and you can't have racial justice without democracy, which I always thought was a great line, but I never knew exactly what you meant. So could you, could you tell us what you mean by that? I was so hoping that was clear by itself. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kathy. Um, let me uh, just quickly uh, to just acknowledge, thank you to Kathy, thank you to um, all the other um, panelists. Uh, it's so powerful. It's, a, it, it's hard coming up here at the last, don't you think, James? Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, yeah. Uh, Talking about democracy, several of us have named it. Talking about democracy right now is a little tough. Um, people hear democracy and it doesn't tend to make most people excited. Um, and so, um, so excited about the opportunity to really name, uh, get real about why we have gotta win that back, uh, why it's so important. And for me, um, that, qu that quote that, you know, we can't get to an inclusive, uh, functional democracy without racial equity, and that we can't actually get to racial equity without democracy is at the core of that idea for me. I've um, uh, been spending a lot of time thinking about Vincent Harding, um, uh, civil rights leader, uh, author, all around genius, um, and his simple, his simple quote, which is a question, is America possible? Um, that's what he was positing was the work of the civil rights movement. That's what he was positing as the work of social justice here in the United States. And, um, uh, you know, I think it's that question feels more real today in this moment than it has in a while. Um, but as profound as this moment it is, the reality is, is that this question in this moment has cropped up every 60 or 70 years for us in this country like clockwork. Right, we jump back 60 years, we got the civil rights movement. We jump back 60, 70 years before that, we're in the period of reconstruction. It is like clockwork because it is the great unanswered question of our country, right? Is simply, can we have a functional democracy? And then at the root of it, from the birth of the country, um, as Van Jones says, there was the American dream and the American reality, right? Um, a dream of equality and democracy, and a reality that fell way short of that. Um, and it's that struggle, that question, that has been driving us since we began as a nation. Um, it is the question that is back in front of us again. And I think the power for me in that is um, a reminder that we are a very young nation. Um, the truth is, uh, we talk about our founding as if it was done. Uh, and in fact, right now, what we're doing is we're founding this nation, right? We might make no mistake about it. And at the core of that is this question of can we get to equity and justice, and can we do it collectively, democratically? Um, and so when I name that, that's what I'm trying to start to tease out. But that journey, and I, James and I are hoping to talk a little bit about, like, how do we, how do we reclaim democracy? How do we rec reclaim that idea? Uh, in a meaningful way. Great. Um, is this on? Oh, yeah. Are you ready? No. Yeah. Sure. I guess. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. Really, a truly an honor, and uh, to be here with Glenn and and all the in incredible speakers and organizations that have uh, put this together. Um, you know, this is something that is near and dear to my personal heart, and I really do, f you know, feel like all, everything that has been said here is what uh, we are often struggling to th think about and 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 fight for uh, w where we live. I, I I'm uh, the executive director and uh, founder of an organization called Rights and Democracy in Vermont and in New Hampshire, 
and uh, you know it's called rights and democracy for exactly this reason. You know, we think that uh, you know in many ways, you know, as, as Nijmi was saying, is you know the, the, we really should think of ourselves, and as you know, was just saying is you know, this is a, a human experiment of us trying to get it right. Uh, you know, the American Revolutionary War isn't over. We are revolutionaries if we really want to have a democracy. Uh, it, you know, we, we think of it as, uh, you know, very much that you can't have a democracy without racial justice and vice versa. Uh, you know, but you can't have, you know, really any kind of justice uh, w w without democracy. And you can't have democracy without human rights. Uh, you know, you, you, we, we, we see, you know, they're all fundamentally connected, as we were talking about. Uh, and that with the last speakers are the systems of oppression are, are absolutely connected and also the systems of, of rights and democracy uh, cannot be divided. Uh, uh, partly uh, one thing that is someone who's been working on human rights now for a, a little over a decade uh, using the human rights framework, people often think of human rights as, as something that uh, is a kind of a legal term or you know, if they know about the Uni Universal Declaration and as an organizer, you know, uh, we, we think of them as, as things that we fight for. You know, we, we win them. They're power struggles. You know, they're, they're power struggles for dignity and for respect and ultimately for love and the values of our communities against uh, the, the systems of greed and, and uh, the people who are, you know, benefiting uh, tremendously at everyone else's expense. And so, um, you know, we think of democracy in the same way, that, that it's something that, you know, we can come together and, and, and we can fight for and we can claim. Uh, and uh, w one of the experiences in some of the photos in the, in the book and then uh, before is a campaign that uh, in, in Vermont for healthcare is a human right. And that was a, a, a campaign of, of claiming that right. You know, it was not in our constitution uh, exactly in, in, in Vermont, or, and, and, but it was something that, you know, everyone needed and wanted to fight for. And, and part of that, it, it was a, power struggle to change what was politically possible. Uh, we passed a, a groundbreaking law. We saw how it was interconnected to many other rights. Uh, in fact, when we passed uh, the bill, uh, right at the end, they excluded uh, undocumented Im immigrants from the bill. And so partly, we ended up having uh, a, a very quick five-day campaign uh, with the uh, beginnings of a new farm worker organization, Migrant Justice in, in Vermont. To, to get this amendment stripped out of the bill. Uh, and we see how you know, they, they, these things are used to divide our communities, uh, as, as Nijimi was talking about, and, and how we need to unite across them. Um, but you know, we also, when we, uh, the politicians and the people in power there ended up uh, thwarting the universal law that had been passed, you know, we very much see it as a power struggle uh, for, for democracy. Uh, that you know our opponents are using every tool in their toolbox they could possibly have to divide us and keep us from this vision that started, you know, before the American Revolution and that we're still fighting for now. Beautiful, and I I love that you were naming, um, uh, you know, democracy is a, 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 an act of claiming power, and I think one of the things uh, at Race Forward is we think about sort of race and social justice and the intersection with democracy is how are we defining democracy? And way too often folks hear democracy and they think ballot box, and that's the end of it, right? Um, and we really have to expand our notion of, of what democracy means and to, to think about what it means to democratize, to, to democratize not just government, but our institutions across the board, right? And, um, and as you were talking, it was really triggering for me um, just sticking with government for a moment because um, it is not just the actions of whether or not we are able to win at the ballot. It is also about the people who are implementing those decisions that determine whether or not we get any real benefit out of them. Um, I was thinking about a, a group of folks uh, that we've been working with in Seattle um, who have uh, from five communities. It's basically the Asian American community, the African American community, and East African community one neighborhood that's fairly multiracial, right? Um, but all coming up against the very real realities of gentrification that we know are, are literally killing our communities across the country right now. Um, and folks started with some basic demands of local government, of city, of uh, we want you all to you know, pass some legislation to, to for us to actually 
rethink what our, our, our current planning and zoning practices look like. Um, and that process started now like over a decade ago. But the piece was really exciting to me is that uh, over the course of those demands and over the course, I'm gonna come back this as, uh, as a set of ideas, and over the course of the city itself, government employees talking about what does equity and what does participation and ownership look like, the city moved from talking about that in piecemeal to creating an office for equitable development. And this past year, the city set, a, set aside $16 million for investments in those communities that were most impacted by, and let's get real, $16 million is not a lot of money. But to at least as seed funding for folks to actually think about what it meant to have ownership of and be able to stay in their communities. And at the beginning of this year, the community and the city went one step further, which was those very neighborhoods should be the folks who decide what to do with that money. That is democracy in action. It is not simply do we get to make a choice about what we get, but we get to decide what we, uh, uh, personally, what we actually want to do with it in terms of how it's determining the impacts of our lives. So I think in that way, we have to continue to deepen this idea of what democracy means and what ownership of our institutions mean as we're, we're thinking about how we move forward. That's great. You know, I, one of the things I like about the framing of this new social contract is that, again, it doesn't drop down on the sky for uh, these are the solutions. They are solutions that come out of our communities because you know, democracy is something that it means that people that are impacted by decisions have a say in them. So you can't drop them down on people. They have to be part of it, you know, as Glenn is saying. And one of the big pieces that we tried uh, in Vermont that was a very interesting kind of experiment in reimagining democracies, we were starting a campaign for a people's budget. We thought that the state budget, the way that it happened, it impacted our lives, our families' lives, our communities in so many dramatic ways. And yet, it really was not part of democracy other than you know, uh, having a choice every two years to vote for people to, that will make these decisions. And even then, a lot of the people that were, uh, we were voting for, when they came in, they were really kind of nibbling around the edges of a lot of the major decisions that were about, you know, the fundamental things around education and healthcare and the, the things that our communities need. Uh, and the fascinating thing about this, and I really liked the, uh, Maya's opening remarks framing it in this context is when we started this campaign for a people's budget, uh, r right when we were launching it, we got smacked with, uh, it was called Tropical Storm Irene. And we were just about to go out and do a whole bunch of community needs assessments uh, in our communities. And the irony was that about 30% of the state was in total crisis. And, uh, and so thinking about human rights and democracy, I think right now, as we go through this ecological transformation, uh, it, you know, the having resilient communities where people can make decisions that, uh, that impact them is more important now than ever. Um, and, and, you know, it was fascinating to be thinking about these big picture questions around, you know, people's budget and, and the needs of our communities and meeting the needs of our communities in this turn area of crisis like, you know, Hurricane Sandy here. Uh, and, uh, you know, in some respects we saw glimpses of you know, of, of our values of our community in action. We didn't think twice about going and making sure that everyone who had been affected by this had a place, a safe place to, uh, to, to, be, to be housed, to have food, to have access to clean water and so on. Mm -hmm. And our community rallied around that. And then we kind of went back afterwards after things were cleaned up to the old way where we didn't, you know, pass people on the street that don't have any housing. And so, uh, you know, partly, uh, you know, that is making our institutions really kind of be the hubs of those values. Uh, and that's where it was the idea with a, a people's budget. So it wasn't just kind of regurgitating year after year what we were doing and then having an austerity fight about what's going to be cut. It would be going out to our communities, doing needs assessments, finding out what you know, people needed to have in their communities, what the priorities were, having principles, as we was talked about, guide that budget. We, we actually still have in writing, we haven't op, uh, operationalized it yet, uh, human rights principles in the Vermont statute for what the budget should be operating under. Um, and, and, and that's part of, you know, kind of reimagining what is possible with democracy. I love, and I, I love this idea of um, 
thinking of our, our institutions of the hubs of our values. Can you imagine that, and if that were true? It, and it triggers for me, um, I wanted to come back to this, about the importance of government employees. Um, some government employees get more love than others. So if I say teachers, people are like, right on, right? <laughs> um, if I say your average bureaucrat, not so much. But the reality is, is that, especially for us at, local, at the local level, um, government is, one in six people in the United States are employed by government. Um, government is the single largest employer of communities of color. Um, it is the single largest employer of communities of color at living wage uh, jobs. The reality is, is that if you want to find the one sector that looks most like our country, if we were just talking about diversity, it would be government. Um, the overwhelming majority of people in government, especially at the local level, share our values. Um, they represent a great untapped resource for us as we think about what does it mean to make democracy real. And I think in that way, one of the pieces that uh, we've really leaned into with our, uh, we have a project called the Government Alliance on Race and Equity is really trying to engage local government and as local government employees and thinking about what is their role in promoting democracy, real democracy, and promoting and holding equity. Um, I just wanted uh, to name, you know, um, there's a lot of things that we've won, us lovers of justice have won, um, that uh, are fall real short in their implementation. And, but all of those require in it for us to really think about how do we embed community decision making into the implementation practices of our local government and how do we actually empower the folks inside government, not elected officials, who many would be happy to see us do that tomorrow to help actually bring their leadership to the forefront and thinking about what the implementation of local democracy looks like. So I think in that way, it's just really critical th that we continue to think about how we can get creative about defining, redefining what democracy looks like for us locally and the ways in which we can translate that into meaningful power um, and meaningful resources for community. That's excellent and very connected to a lot of the stuff that we've been trying to get our heads around. Uh, you know, especially as you say, there's so many times we've had major wins uh, fall short in implementation. Um, par partly, you know, uh, because it is, you know, this big power struggle, we see it as oftentimes, uh, you know, th this idea of like we want to change policy, but oftentimes we leave the game of changing policymakers to other folks. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you look at what our opponents do. Uh, you know, w we essentially think we, we need to do everything that they're doing, just the opposite for like the, the, the light side of the force. Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, and they have very sophisticated strategies to unelect people that are champions of the things we care about and to put in their folks. And so a lot of the, uh, you know, effort that uh, Rights and Democracy's, uh, you know, kind of sibling uh, C4 organization is thinking about is like, how do we have people that actually represent our communities uh, be the people in those policymaking situations, and uh, and and you know how do we make it so that uh, you know the movements don't just sort of rally outside the building, but you know people are that are making the policy are actually reflecting and representing the movement when they're making it, and we can have that kind of accountability uh, as part of the democracy we're fighting for. I love and you know the beauty in what you what, where you just ended, James, is that we we heard it all multiple examples to, tonight um, that the solutions we're looking for, we already have them. Um, we just need to get them to scale. And I think in that way, this, this just name, wanting to name this reality that local is national and we've confused it for way too long. We've, we've, we've named it inverted. Um, and just so excited to have the opportunity to share stage and hear about some of your great work. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.